is standing by for a look at Rockettes win. Thank you very much, guys. Rocket are on the board in the summer split. And you can hear the audience yelling your name, Steve. First of all, welcome to the LCS. It's a pleasure to chat to you. Let's ask, you. how does it feel hearing the guys chanting your name? And they were chanting it all game long. Well, it feels really good. But during the game, I had no idea they were chanting my name. I was so focused on the game. I had no idea. It seems like top laners in Europe are getting a lot of fans, you know, people chanting Hooney, people chanting Steve. Let's talk about this game. You were playing Maokai, yeah. some great initiations, very aggressive play. What went right for you? What went wrong for you? And talk me through the entire match. Well, for me, the 2v2 top, we had a weaker 2v2 uh, against uh, Jax Volibear. So I don't think I did that well in lane, but then uh, I tried to make some plays and, yeah, engage, as you said. Yeah. I don't know. It, was... it worked out. I mean, it worked out. How did you bounce back from the loss yesterday? You know, you're playing no flash Hecarim top. Let's be fair, you got camped. Anybody can admit that. But, you know, what was it like transitioning from that heavy loss to today? Quite a, a strong victory. Well, it was a strong victory for me today, but I, I don't think I did anything special, to be honest. It was really my team doing all the job. <laughs> I don't know if the audience agrees. They're definitely supporting you. Uh, Steve, let's just ask one more question. What's it like playing on the stage in comparison to playing from home? with the lights, the pressure, and obviously with now the crowd? Well, at first, you're a bit nervous, but uh, five minutes in the game, I was really focused on just the game. So I didn't even notice the crowd until the end when everyone was chanting my name. I didn't, I didn't know why. <laughs> first of all, I want to reiterate, Steve, congratulations on the win. I'm looking forward to chatting to you more in the summer split. And with that, we're going to head back over to the analyst desk to wrap up that game. Thank you very much, Trevor, Trevor. Well, we heard that from the man himself and just, uh, well, the casters talked about it a lot as well and we got to talk to Steve. Very good from him being able to adapt coming from yesterday. Now on that Maokai, a little bit more utility and even playing from behind and for <laughs> Rockat as a whole. <laughs> Sorry, I can still hear the crowd in the background. Yeah. Never change crowd, never change. <laughs> um, but on the, um, well, on general for Rocket, definitely some some good individual performances for me that made it that the entire team could move forward. For sure, this was a much better Rocket than, uh, th especially than we saw yesterday. I think they felt a lot more composed in this game a lot. Uh, although there was still pressure on Steve, he held up on it. He was on Maokai this game, very, you know, simply just held off. Yes, Jax uh, pushed a couple of towers down. They never really panicked from that. And, and Rocket just played their own game for the entire game. And, and really only when Gambit started picking up a couple of kills towards the end did it maybe look like it was going to swing back. But I'm liking that we're seeing both positives and negatives from just about every team so far in the mm -hmm. EU LCS. Definitely a lot on the line in these games. Yeah, you talk about playing your own game for Rocket. Before this game, we were wondering what game will Gambit be playing? Will it be Forgivens? Definitely some adaptations in there for them as well. Yeah, definitely adaptations. Uh, in this game, Gambit had far less of a forgiven game when we talked about how they played like SK in yesterday's games. This time, Kabachad, there was a lot more on him. Uh, he was getting a lot of farm at the same time, pushing towers down as well. So this was a, a, a nice sign from Gambit showing us that they're not just playing for forgiven. They are now adapting a little bit more as time goes on with this uh, new addition to their AD carry role. Yeah, and as said, they also have uh, some circumstances outside of the game that might make it harder for them to train. And I'd love to Forgiven actually on camera. He was just, he was happy and all smiles as well, just realizing that they probably put up the best fight that they could in this one, but that they should work towards the other weeks. On the side of Rocket, I mean, we called it a little bit of a do or die game. They mm -hmm. definitely got this one in the bag, but still some things in the late game when they over pushed there at the bottom tower and right. Wu Light's positioning was a little off where I thought oof these are the things that we have seen before. Yeah it's funny it was a do or die game but it seemed to be do and die for a lot of yeah, the time which for Rocket which <laughs> does work but uh, the problem for especially this comp the, the Rocket were running on, on not so much of a problem Wu Light was dying every single fight which as long as Azir is outputting damage isn't the end of the world. If Kabachad get, gets on one and Azir can blow everybody else up, it's not too bad, still very risky. There was that fight, however, Nuke Duck couldn't output a whole bunch of damage. Mm -hmm. Will I got caught at that lower uh, bottom lane inhibitor and they couldn't really fight from there. Saying that Will I still needs to tighten up just a little bit if he's on a Cogmore. We saw the last fight very good from Will I 
completely out of harm's way, Steve tanking so many people. Uh, that was what Rocket needed to do. Uh, Gambit held on well as well. That's one of the things. They had resolve. They were playing a Jax, but could never get him into the back line to blow up more than one person. Yeah, exactly. He always prioritized uh, that wheel, which is, of course, hard, because when yeah, that Jax of is course, uh, of jumping course. on your face. But to me, we're talking a lot about how teams in a 2015 season are multi threat teams that need to put out threats from, from different fronts to stay relevant. And I feel like an extra dimension is added to that when you look at a team like Rockad because of the positional errors Bullet like, sometimes tends to get in. And the problem is that in this game, of course, Nukedog got running, he had that right. Azir that builds up so much force as the game goes on. But you have to be able as a team to always rely on that. And I think that will become the task for Rockad moving forward. I completely agree. And uh, again, it's another reason why uh, it was so difficult for Kabachar to get any more than one person. You look at the lineup, Azir, Alice, Mr. Maokai, so much peel in that back line. Kabachad was lucky if he got one person, and Nuke Duck knew his role. He just outputs damage, uses his ultimate if they really need it for disengage and can just blow up a load of people in there the fights. Go. And they really needed to win, and they got it for Rocket. And it's almost time for the first Fnatic SK clash of the summer split, where we'll see a 2014 throwback matchup in the bottom lane, at least. But before we check out the teams, let's look at the rise and return of Fnatic's AD 